Welcome to the second lesson of the Shopify app development crash course. So lesson two is all about writing a specification document. If you've missed our intro and previous lesson, the playlist will be linked down below. Go ahead and check it out. We definitely recommend that you watch each lesson by order, even though each one of them also stands on its own. If you are watching this lesson during its premiere, we are available in the live chat right now. So whatever questions you have, just write them down in the live chat and we will answer them as the lesson progresses. If you are watching it after the premiere, do not worry. We are also available in the comment section of this video. Just hit us up with whatever questions you will have and we will do our best to answer them. Before we jump in, what exactly is a specification document? This is your way as the product manager and the product owner to actually convey to your developers the concepts behind your idea. This is where you take an abstract idea and turn it into a real life structure that your developers can later take and develop. We have seen people wanting to develop their own app, whatever it is for Shopify or something else, writing a very simplistic specification document that just says, I want my app to do one, two, three, and that's it. And expecting their developers to understand whatever it is in their head that is the product but this is just not good enough. When you write a specification document, you need to remember that your developers are not inside your head. They don't know what you are thinking about. When you say, I need to have a login button, they don't know where to place the button, what is the text on the button, what happens when someone clicks this button, and what kind of login details are you asking for? What is the design of the login page? So many questions that need to be answered in your specification and mockups. And this lesson is all about how to do it the right way, but also the cost effective way. So let's get into it. So we generally divide the specification process into four stages. The first stage is writing down your outline. This is the structure of your specification document. This is you putting down a structure that will be easier for you to later fill in. Next is the functionality stage. In this stage, you actually fill in the structure that you created with the meat of the specification. This is where you write down all of the things that are relevant for your app, how it works, what are the different stages and states in the app, what are the different components? If there is a dropdown, what options does this dropdown give the customers? How does each thing work? It's really about getting in to the nitty gritty of how your product is going to work and writing it down on a document. The next stage would be design and mockups. This is where you use design tools to create different mockups and previews of your product for your developers so they can understand exactly the connection between the functionality and how it should look like. You want to make sure that you do have mockups and designs for every part of the app, different stages and different frames. For example, if you have a button, you want to think about the button when it's disabled, when it's in hover state, when it's on click state, when it's loading. You need to make sure that you figure all the thing out in advance and path them forward to your developers. The final stage that we're going to discuss is deciding on the MVP. Eventually, when writing down the specification document, you want to be as detailed as possible and come up with as many ideas as possible. And these documents can get very long. It's crucial to decide on an MVP, narrow down the product only to its essential, to come up with something that is affordable and is great for you to just launch your product with at a cheaper price to test the water. We also wanted to share with you how our first ever specification document looked like. As you can see, it looks very unprofessional and kind of messy, but this is just to show you that even if you're not a professional product manager, if you're not a professional developer, you can still do that. All you have to do is just understand what you want your product to do and specify everything on a white page. We've broken it down to a few different sections. At the top, we have the general idea of the functionality and the app name. Below that, we have the key players and users in the app. In this case, you can see that there are merchants, end customers, developers, and app owners, but you need to specify it according to your idea. For example, if you have a mobile app or a desktop app, you want to take that under consideration. Below that comes the payment and billing. This is where you decide how much and how you're going to charge for your app. You don't have to decide on it now, you can just list down a few pricing plan ideas. We're going to discuss more about payment plans and options in future lessons. Below that comes the main functionality. This is where you actually break down 
everything there is to know about the app, different stages, different options, if there are dropdowns, what are the options within the dropdowns, if there is the front end, how it should look like, if it's the back end, how it should look like, and all the options. We also break down the main functionality to three different parts. First, we have the storefront, everything that is visible to the end customer. Then we have the store admin, which is everything that is available for the merchant on the Shopify dashboard and not available for the end customer. And finally, we have the app backend. This is where you, the app owner, can handle all of your users and manage specific functionalities. For example, if you want to give a merchant a refund, if you want to keep track of certain analytics or anything like that, this is where you need to specify it. By the way, when we just started out, we completely skipped the app backend process because we really wanted to focus on building new features for merchants, but it turned out to be a huge headache. So we highly recommend developing an app backend right from the get-go so you can provide excellent customer support for your merchants. The final part is the developer's input. First, we'll have to hire developers, but more on that in future lessons. This is where the developer will go through the specification document, ask questions, and give you some more points to think about. This is very important. And after the feedback, there is a good chance you're going to have to change some of the other parts of the document but this is not something you can ignore or skip in any way. And just to make this process a little bit easier for you, we've created a document with specification formula you can use for your own product. You can find it linked in the video description for free. Now let's talk about mockups. In this screen, you can see some of our first mockups that went along with the specification you saw in the last slide. As you can see, these mockups are in no way perfect. The fonts do not match, some of the spacing doesn't make sense, and there are many more issues. But that is okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. What we did is we used the Shopify Polaris framework. And Polaris is a UI framework provided by Shopify. In fact, the entire Shopify admin, the entire backend of the store where the merchant manages his store is built in Polaris. And Shopify encourages anyone developing apps for their platform to develop their apps with a Polaris UI. So we decided to use Polaris for our apps for two main reasons. One is that Shopify encourages apps to do that, as I said, and we wanted to go along with their best practices. And two is that using an existing framework like Polaris removed the need to actually hire a designer or anyone that would build a design and UI kit for us from scratch. Again, we mentioned in the beginning of this lesson that the entire premise behind this lesson is to also be cost effective. In fact, this is the entire premise behind this course. And for that reason, using Polaris or any other pre-made UI kit would help you greatly in making your entire development and specification process very lean and to the point. As you can see, these mockups are in no way perfect. And the reason this is fine is because of the Polaris framework. Our developers were able to take the concepts we created here and use existing components from Polaris to make sure everything looks good and the design is cohesive. Even though we are not designers and so our mockups were far from perfect. So now that you've seen our past mockups, let's talk a little bit about the tools that will help you create better mockups than we did. I will start at the end and talk about the states and pages because this is the most important part of creating mockups and specifications alike. You want to make sure that your mockups include everything. They need to include all of the pages, all of the different states, if it's disabled, enabled, if a dropdown is open, what are the options in this dropdown, if a button is enabled or clicked or on hover. All of these things will affect design and you have to make sure to think about it when you create your mockups. Moving backwards, let's talk about your design options because this will also affect the tools that you end up using. You have a few options for creating your design. And we talked about Shopify Polaris and why this is the one we recommend if you actually develop an app for Shopify. But other options at your disposal are things like buying a pre-made dashboard. If you just look on Google for pre-made dashboards, you will see a bunch of options that you can buy for pretty affordable prices. This will give you a ready-made design framework and you can just use their comp Components. This will allow you to get a pretty nice looking design without actually hiring a designer. 
But if you do want to create something that is completely custom made for your product, you can hire a designer on Upwork or Fiverr or anywhere else and this designer will create your entire design framework from scratch. You do need to know that this would be the longest option as well as the most expensive one. And lastly, when it comes to mockups, let's talk about the tools at your disposal. If you are using either Shopify Polaris or a pre-made dashboard, you can use either Figma or Photoshop to create your mockups with the design ready-made. When we first started out, we used Photoshop. We would take screenshots of full pages in Shopify and recreate them using the different Polaris elements into new pages with new options of our app. This worked well enough, but to be honest, it was very time consuming and Photoshop is not necessarily a tool that was created for this purpose. It is very unflexible and in a lot of cases we would have to redo the same thing a few times just to make one small change in a specific button or in a specific text box. So what I do recommend if you're just starting out is to use Figma. Figma is a tool that was created exactly for this purpose. And when you use Figma, you can actually create one one component one time and just reuse it as many times as you need. For example, you would create a Polaris button and just copy this button wherever you need it and just change the text, the size, and if you need to, also the color. You can do the same thing for an entire page or an entire component in the page. So you get the idea. There is a lot that you can do with Figma relatively easily. And I'm saying it as someone who is not a designer. Another important thing that Figma allows you to do is create prototypes. And prototypes are basically the next step after mockups. This is where you actually connect a few different mockups into a flow. This can simulate a button click for your developers. And this allows you to send them basically a front-end design prototype that simulates the app functionality. They will know exactly what needs to happen if they click these specific links. What page does it go to? If they click this button, what pop-up comes up? This is an incredibly easy way to show your developers how things work. In fact, once we started using Figma, our specifications became way shorter than they used to be because the visualization that Figma allows you to do is just incredible. Whatever you're using Photoshop or Figma, if you don't want to create an item from scratch and you want to just take a screenshot of a specific item because it's too complex for you to create, you can use the inspect tool of your browser. This is a developer tool and it exists in every browser out there. And it basically allows you to see and change the code of the page live and see these changes on the page. Now, I know this sounds a little overwhelming if you're not a developer, but I'm not talking about completely changing the structure of the page. I'm talking about changing one specific text area that you want to change, maybe deleting an element or adding another element. We can create another video talking about this if you're interested, but this is another tool you can definitely use. Lastly, we have Balsamic. And Balsamic is an online tool that allows you to create wireframes. Wireframes are a little different than mockups because they don't include the design. All wireframes do is a rough sketch, design free, of your page and the elements in your page. This is something you would give a designer. I wouldn't recommend using wireframes if you didn't hire a designer. But if you did hire a designer, you would create your wireframes in Balsamic, give it to your designer, and he will probably create the mockups in Figma. He will basically dress up your wireframes in the design. So I know this is a lot. And I know getting started with building mockups is not easy. For that reason, we want to share with you maybe our most valuable tool in this crash course, and that is a Polaris template for Figma. We've created it for our own use, so we have an easy way to use Polaris component when we create new mockups for new features in our different apps. And we want to share with you this resource because it would really help you get started creating mockups easily and effectively using Polaris components. It is linked down below. Again, all of these resources are completely free, so just click the link and get your framework for Figma. The last step of creating your specification document would be to define your MVP, which is the minimum viable product, which means the leanest version of the product that can go live and be functional for live audience. The way to actually do that will be to list down all of your features from the specification document. And after your developer went through the document and gave you his time estimation 
function per feature, which we're going to discuss in future lessons, you're going to ask yourself a few different questions for each feature. The first question will be, will this feature be important to most of your customers? And this is where you'll do for this feature something similar to what you've done for the entire product back in the validation table. You'd like to understand in percentages how many of your merchants will need this feature or it's just something that is nice to have. The next question will be, are other features dependent on this one? So if you want to build something that is kind of a core inside the app and other features can only be built after this feature is live, then maybe it's going to be a good idea to start with this feature. The next question will be, how long or difficult or complex would it be to build this feature? And this one is pretty much related to the time estimations you got from the developer. The most valuable resource you have is development hours and it might be very expensive for you when you're just starting out. So based on the time estimation that the developer gave you, you need to understand if this is a feature you can give up or not. The last question you want to ask yourself is what is the marketing potential of this feature? If it's something that is easy to market, if you see a lot of potential, if you see that it's unique and you think a lot of merchants will be excited about it, if it's visual and it's visible for the end customer and the merchant, then yeah, this is a feature that you would like to develop first. Now, it's important to mention that you do need to consider all of these questions and really go for the ones you absolutely have to develop for the first version of the product. And another thing that is worth mentioning, you are not giving up on any of these features. Eventually, you will build all of them. But just to start it out and to make sure we're doing it in a budget-friendly way, we're going to only use the features that are absolute must for the app. After you narrowed it down, you now have the MVP feature list, which includes only the core elements, the features that are the easiest to market, the features that are not complex and not expensive to build, and the features that are most valuable for as many customers as possible. The rest of the feature will now go to backlog and after you go live and handle the first few customers, you can start building it according to feedback you'll get from your customers. It's important to mention that one of the purposes of the MVP is not only to launch a cheap product, is more so to test the water and validate your product on a live audience. You want to make sure that you spend as little time and money as possible for your first version of the product. Also, the leaner the product is going to be, the faster the approval process within the Shopify App Store will be. And we're going to discuss that in future lessons. So this is the end of the product specification lesson. I know we gave out a lot of information and a lot of points in this one, so it might be a little overwhelming, but your next steps are pretty simple. Go ahead and download the product specification structure document and start filling it out with your specification. As you do that, also start creating your mockups. While you might think this is a linear job, where you first create a specification and then a mockup, a lot of the times when you create your mockups, you will find out that you missed some things in specification. So we always recommend that you work on these things together. Specify and create the mockups for each page individually so you don't miss big things that you later have to change the entire document or the entire specification for a mock for. One of the most important things to remember when it comes to specifying your product is to be as specific as possible. Really drill down into the nitty gritty of your product. Do not assume that your developers will understand anything. It is a lesson that we are still learning even today. Whenever something seems so obvious to us that we don't include it in the specification, we end up having issues with it later because the developers did what they understood and not what we actually wanted them to do. We end up spending more money on development and testing at the end of the process. We end up delaying the release of this feature because we have to fix something that didn't appear in the specification. And trust me, this will happen no matter what you do. No matter what you do, there will be small things in your specification that are are just not there and the developers will make assumptions and develop whatever they seem fit. Sometimes they will be right and sometimes they won't be. So you want to try to avoid it as much as possible. Try to be as specific as possible. Next week's lesson is going to talk all about how to find developers and this is going to be another step towards actually beginning development. So make an effort to finish your specification and mockups towards the next week's lesson so you can start looking for your developers and working on your development. If you have any questions, write them down in the comments and we will make sure to answer them as best as we can. Until then, have a great week. 